Last summer, I had a blast looking into different college football leagues around the world and came across Simon Fraser University, which was the only Canadian school playing at the NCAA level. I also ran into their basketball team a few months later, and they were all super nice. Unfortunately, this video is not a positive one, as a little over a year ago, the university decided to axe its football program, and the rest of its athletic department may be in trouble as well. This is the story of the NCAA's only Canadian college football team. This is the fall of Simon Fraser football. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football and spring league football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also, let me know who your favorite college football team is in the comments section below. Simon Fraser began playing American college football in 1965 when the school decided to create their athletic department. They chose football to be one of their first sports because it was viewed to be a great way to enhance their students' experience and promote school spirit. Along with that, a lot of the time, football programs can make enough money to sustain other sports programs as well. What is interesting about this is Simon Fraser is a Canadian school located in Burnaby, British Columbia, which is the neighboring city to Vancouver. The school wanted to give their student athletes a U.S. sports experience along with the Canadian education. Originally, the school played college football as a member of the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics, aka the NAIA, where they would compete against American teams. They would find some success at the NAIA level, going 152 and 175, but never really being able to find sustainable success due to not being able to recruit at the same level as their American counterparts. The football team, along with the basketball team, struggled to find a stable conference to stick around in, making life difficult. So in 2002, the university decided to move all their sports to the Canadian West Conference, which plays at the highest tier of Canadian collegiate sports. The Canadian Inter-University Sports The Canada West Conference was created in 1972 when the Western Canadian Intercollegiate Athletic Union split into two different athletic associations, the previously mentioned Canada West and the Great Plains Athletic Conference. The Canada West Conference consists of schools spanning from Victoria to Saskatoon. Joining the Canada West Conference allowed Simon Fraser to play in the same conference as their crosstown rivals, the British Columbia Thunderbirds, who they had played in the Shrum Bowl annually since 1967. When they played at the NIIA level, the schools would alternate where the game was played and whether they were playing under American rules or Canadian rules. Things would start off rough for Simon Fraser in their first season playing Canadian rules football as they would go 2-6 and six, but would quickly turn things around in 2003, when Chris Beaton led them to a 5-3 and three record and their only conference title in school history. They would win the Hardy Trophy, but would lose the UTEC Bowl, but would return to struggling in 2004 when they went 3-5, and five, although they were ranked number 6 in the rankings at one point. 2005 would see them go 0-8 oh and, and saw Chris Beaton get replaced by Frank Bowers, who would follow with an 0-8 oh season himself. They would lose in overtime to British Columbia in 2005 and to number 10 Alberta 39 to 36 in 2006. Dave Johnson took over in 2007 and would go 0 and 8 in his first season. Finally, after a 25 game losing streak and over 1,400 days, Simon Fraser would get their first win of the 2008 season on August 23rd when they beat British Columbia 24 to 10. They would also proceed to upset number two Saskatchewan at home a few weeks later and finished the year 6-4, losing the Hardy Cup to Calgary 44-21 to end the season. While things looked to be on the up and up for the Simon Fraser football team, they would quickly return to struggling going 1-5-1, with their only win coming in the Shrum Bowl in 2009. They would decide to move to the NCAA heading in 2010 as a probationary member. This became possible when the NCAA opened the door to potential international membership in 2008 following the creation of a 10-year pilot program, one largely initiated by its crosstown rivals at the University of British Columbia. They would join the Great Northwest Athletic Conference, a Division II conference, with Athletic Director Milton Richards explaining, I think Christina Collins said it best. She said, anytime we play a U.S. team, we're playing for Canada. 
That is exciting. 2010 would be a transition year, with 2011 becoming their first season as an official member of the NCAA. They were granted full membership for the 2010-2011 season after Canada West, the Canadian Inter-University Sports Association that SFU played in, put all of the clan's athletic teams on probation, not allowing them to participate in the 2011 season, although it was supposed to be a two-year transition period. They would go 1-9 in 2010, with their lone win coming over British Columbia. 2011, they went 3-7, and seven, and in 2012, they went 5-6. and six. Due to their move to the NCAA, becoming the first Canadian school to do so, stricter schedule requirements led to the Shrum Bowl becoming impossible to play from 2011 to 2021. This really sucked for the schools and their students, as it was their main rivalry matchup since the schools began playing each other in 1967. British Columbia was rumored to make the jump to Division II at some point, but it never came to fruition. When they first joined the Northwest Conference, they were actually saving money on football travel, being able to bus to every game, and not having to fly across the Canadian provinces. The NCAA also covers travel costs for the playoffs. The 2012 season would be the high point for the school, as they would never come close to a winning season the rest of their program's history, going 8-90 the rest of the time as a member of the Great Northwest Conference. Having three straight zero-win seasons, putting together a 33-game losing streak that lasted 1,414 days and was finally snapped when they beat Willamette 54-7 on September 1st, 2018. For that game, their last win had come against South Dakota Mines 53-31 on October 18th, 2014. Their first conference win since beating South Dakota Mines would not come until over five years later when they beat Azusa Pacific 24-17 on October 19th, 2019, meaning they would go 1,826 days and 36 games without a conference win. Their 2020 season would be canceled due to ongoing world events at the time, and 2021 would see them go 1-7. Following the 2021 season, there were only three GNAC teams left playing football in the conference, leading all three, Simon Fraser, Central Washington, and Western Oregon, to join the Lone Star Conference. This led to Simon Fraser having to travel to Texas and New Mexico for the 2022 season, causing travel costs to skyrocket. The positive of this move, the positive of this move though, was that it led to them being able to bring back the Shrum Bowl with their first matchup in 12 years coming down to the final 96 second. Simon Fraser would score a touchdown with 96 seconds left, capping a 91 yard drive. But on 4th and 10 on their 15 with 37 seconds left, the Thunderbirds would convert and got the ball down to the 1-yard line. They would score on the next play with 25 seconds left to steal the win 18-17. Many were excited for the football program as they had upgraded facilities in the works and it looked like the Shrum Bowl was here to stay. But then administration would shock everyone a few months later when the university announced on April 4th, 2023 that they would be disbanding the program. This came after the Lone Star Conference decided not to renew their relationship it had with SFU due to its location 140 miles north of Seattle. President Joy Johnson told the media, this is a difficult decision and not one taken lightly. The recent announcement that the team has not been invited to continue in the Lone Star Conference, we do not have a conference to plan beginning in 2024. The ongoing uncertainties create an unacceptable experience for our students. The university has carefully considered all available options and as leadership teams, we concluded that football is no longer a feasible sport for SFU. As a member of the Division II Conference, the team had a record of 18-99 and failed to win more than one game in its final six seasons. The school planned to stay at the NCAA level, but just chose to get rid of football. Five players applied to the BC Supreme Court for an injunction aimed at reversing SFU's decision, but a judge denied the application on May 11th. On the same day, Johnson apologized to players, staff, and alumni for the impact and stress, and announced the hiring of a consultant from McLaren Global Sports Solutions. The school planned to honor their commitment when it came to athletic scholarships and also help players transfer if they wanted to transfer. The university expected that players and alumni would be angry, but never expected the backlash would include any legal actions or save SFU football campaign that quickly gained support from both the local and national media. The third party consultant recommended that if the football program were to return, it would not be feasible or sustainable to continue playing in the U.S. under the NCAA 
or NAIA, but instead the U Sports and the Canada West Conference were the school's best options. But there were some major problems with the solution, as it would mean that Simon Fraser would need to move their other sports back to U Sports or get a special exemption. The report also identified significant concerns about SFU's Department of Athletic and Recreation, including growing budget deficits and a lack of capacity to support its current programming. In August, SFU parted ways with Athletic Director Teresa Hansen, who oversaw the scrapping of the football program, calling it a mutual agreement that the time is right for a change in direction. According to Offside, as of February 7, 2024, the university let go its entire sports information department, which is not a good sign for the future of the university's sports. The school is yet to get a new athletic director as well. It looks like sports are in trouble at Simon Fraser University as a whole and it's unlikely the football program will ever come back. But what do you think? Can Simon Fraser athletics as a whole and specifically football be saved? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and as always, remember to embrace the grind.